so here's my project and you can see that I use the strips and those strips were used to cover the seam lines. I sewed this together actually using a, a zigzag stitch, like a satin stitch. But what I did is I made sure that it wasn't too heavy. And it was wide enough to make sure that I catch fabric on each side because that's what's holding this together. And it's also securing that batting. Then my strips are on both sides. I stitched this in one step. This is the back, and I know it's the back because I can see some stitches I still need to trim from a tie-off. But you can see that with this particular design, the way that I created it, it really doesn't have a lot of tie-off stitches that are unsightly. So it turned out very well. This is the front side, and again, you can see that it's completely reversible on both sides. I use my machine and with my dual feed foot and I, I stitched on all of my binding and I sewed this by machine. If you wanted to make the block where it's a conventional block and it's trimmed off too much on this side, but this was the, the, my first idea was to do that and make it conventional like a regular quilt and have a backing. And then I thought, well, it would be a lot more fun if I made it reversible. But in that case, I have a washable tearaway here that I could leave in this backing and I could remove, you know, some portions of it. It's not necessary to remove it all because it will wash away. I could sew my blocks together in the conventional manner and just put my backing on, stitch in the ditch, and around the outline of this right next to that satin stitch, and I'd have a great looking either quilt top or, or a project. Here's this block again. And you can see that I have my background fabric on the front and the back. I have my, in my case, I have battleizer and then I have a no-show mesh. So in this case, I use no-show mesh. And for this no-show mesh, the nice thing about it is it really doesn't add much weight. You're going to, to cut this either you decide how wide you want your strips so in my case my strips are not that wide but remember that I have my fabric turned under so you can see they finished out to be about three quarters of an inch so I think I cut this like one and a half inches and I, I folded it so that it was folded to the center whenever I created that and what I had was a quarter inch seam. So I trimmed my blocks to a quarter of an inch outside this line because it gives you a great line. You can also see that I have different fabric on the front and the back. You are using your embroidery thread on the front and back when you do this because you don't want to have this unfinished on the back. Now on this particular project, you can see I use bobbin thread because it's not necessary. Here's another block. So you can see the variety of colors and you can see these are batiks. Batiks make, make a nice looking project. So in this case, it would have a different look if I create a table runner out of these. These, if you use Insel Bright, would be nice little trivets for a holiday. And if you had a design that you found 
that was say a pumpkin or something like that, they'd make nice little blocks. Here's another in the hoop project that I created and it's not entirely sewn in the hoop. The zipper is all of the front and back of this project was just an in the hoop project and I sewed it together using my serger and you can just see how pretty it is and then I have a, my tag is actually a piece of the zipper that was because I always buy longer zippers and you, look at what a nice gift that would make and this was the first one that I created while I was testing it out you can actually tell I think the one on the left is a better looking project. And uh, I had this fabric that I wasn't necessarily that fond of, and I thought, well, let's see what I can make. And th this is a good example of why, if you really want something to show up, a, a darker thread would look better against this background. Well, I'm Terry Maffitt. I hope this project is uh, something that you'll find fun. And if you have questions, as always, you know where to find me and just stitching with the Brother Luminaire. Thank you, everybody, and have a great day.